In one of the recent videos on fusion, or the breakthrough in fusion, someone in the comments called me a party pooper, because I tried to basically disprove the actual announcement. Okay, time to poop on another party. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and so today we're going to be discussing that other paper that was released not so long ago, that essentially claimed to have created some kind of a wormhole inside a quantum computer. With this article from Quantum Magazine essentially serving as the main coverage for what was discovered in this case. And the thing is, this is, I think, the more recent headline. The original headline was a little bit more catchy. But despite all of this, even right now, the article and the actual headline is still kind of, sort of, misleading. Misleading in the sense that, well, first of all, today, when you hear a wormhole, this is kind of what comes to mind. Or something like this. Essentially, some kind of a tunnel or some kind of a connection between two very distant points that you can use to travel anywhere almost instantly. The more scientific term for this is Einstein-Rosen bridge, because this was the idea proposed by both scientists just a little bit less than a hundred years ago. But as you probably know from a lot of previous videos, from all of the multi-searches of the universe, from pretty much everything the scientists or the astronomers have done so far, not a single example of these so-called wormholes has been actually discovered. There have been some hints that maybe something out there was a wormhole and not a black hole, but none of this was conclusive. In other words, even today, this is still a kind of a very hypothetical concept, and we don't really know if these exist. But this relatively recent article essentially kind of made it sound like this type of a wormhole was now created inside a quantum computer, specifically the one from Google, based on this model known as Sycamore. Or is it Sycamore? Ah, one of those. Anyway, the important part here is that a lot of news articles picked up on this, and there was quite a lot of chatter everywhere, going as far as saying that, well, basically we now can create wormholes, or even going as far as suggesting that we now have the proof for what's known as the holographic principle. Now, this is sort of beyond the scope of this video, but in a nutshell, it's a suggestion that a lot of things that we have in the universe, and specifically a lot of, I guess, laws of physics, is essentially a hologram that sort of arises from much, much smaller things on much smaller scales, including a kind of a reality where we live. But more specifically, it basically suggested that gravity itself is a kind of a hologram that arises from the interaction of various quantum particles on a much smaller scale. And by being able to create a wormhole, which is essentially a gravitational concept, inside a quantum computer, in some sense this provided evidence for the idea of holographic principle. But that's of course one of the implications. Or I guess one of the suggestions, based on what the scientists discussed in a lot of press releases, such as this one right here from Caltech. Or this one right here from the MIT. But something in the story was not really adding up. And so I actually wanted to wait for someone a little bit smarter than me to basically help me summarize my concerns about this particular announcement, and more specifically explain that nothing in here is unusual, no wormholes were created, and that even the quantum processing part itself was not even necessary. And this wonderful person, Peter Voigt, of Columbia University Mathematics Department, has always been sort of good at connecting the dots in his blog, this blog right here, that you can find in the description. Now, he was actually one of the first to address this, but there were a lot of other scientists that joined in to basically try to explain that, well, it looks like there was no discovery in this particular case at all. Nothing new, amazing, or even unusual was found anywhere in the paper. But what exactly was found? Well, first of all, you have to remember, this is already known to be a simulation. It's basically something you run on a computer. No real wormhole was created anywhere, even if it was created at all. And so in some sense, it's no different from what you're seeing right now. I am simulating this wormhole on your screen, and you're seeing a simulation of a wormhole, which is not real at all, and basically just represents a visualization. As of today, based on all of the other research from physicists around the world, we are pretty certain that no actual wormhole can be physically created just yet, until we find a way to create some kind of a negative energy that can actually stabilize it over a long period of time. At the moment, nothing like that exists. And so the main point in the paper was to never really create a wormhole as much as try to figure out if they can actually simulate something equivalent to quantum gravity inside a quantum computer, or if they can try to simulate a theory that connects quantum mechanics with the general relativity. And though this was the aim of the research, it's still a little bit unclear if they actually were able to represent anything in their paper. And this is of course a really important question today because we know quite a lot about the theory of gravity and we observe its effects everywhere, but we also know quite a lot about quantum mechanics and we observe those effects as well. 
but there doesn't seem to be any connection between these two ideas, and this is exactly what a lot of modern research tries to solve. How do you actually connect the theory of gravity to the theory of quantum physics and all of these subatomic particles? At the moment, there doesn't seem to be a connection, and that's basically the mystery here. With quantum gravity potentially being a solution one day, but not yet. Nevertheless, that's kind of the main goal of the paper as well. And so the scientists behind this paper reasoned that if you can actually create some kind of a gravitational effect inside a quantum computer, or basically simulate some kind of a gravitational effect, you could then slowly, maybe, take us a step closer to figuring out quantum gravity. Or at least some kind of a connecting theory between these two separate theories of physics. And then by using a relatively complex mathematical model that was actually originally calculated on a typical classical computer, they tried to run some of the modeling on the quantum computer by Google, at some point observing that at least one of the qubits seemed to be entangled in just the right way that it was producing relevant information from the other system as well. And from their perspective, it might have appeared as if qubit passed through some kind of a wormhole. Here's one of the figures from the paper that tries to explain this as well. So essentially the inversion of qubit was seen as a kind of a symbolic passage through, I guess, a wormhole. But was it? And more importantly, does this at all validate the holographic principle as well? Well, I'm sure the scientists are going to be talking about the results from this paper for a pretty long time, but in a nutshell, a lot of scientists that have been actually quoted in the article by Quanta have now actually come out to say that a lot of things here were completely misrepresented. First of all, just as I mentioned before, this is as much creating a wormhole as I'm creating a wormhole right now on your screen. It's basically an imaginary wormhole. It doesn't seem to exist. Second of all, all of their original calculations have nothing to do with quantum computers. All of the calculations were done on a classical computer and used a 9-qubit quantum computer to then try to see if they get the same result. Or just to rephrase this, they essentially try to see if you can get the same result on a quantum computer as a classical computer. And though the quantum computer had a lot more noise in it, the results, not surprisingly, were exactly the same. Actually, if the results were not the same, it would be a much bigger discovery. Moreover, a 9-qubit quantum computer can easily be simulated on any classical computer without a lot of issues. Which means that you can pretty much get the same results on a regular classical computer, with the quantum computer in this case really serving just as a kind of a buzzword. And so a lot of scientists that are very familiar with these calculations so far have come out and basically said that nothing really important was discovered here, nothing was achieved, with no actual proof of anything including quantum gravity being achieved in this case either. And so the real issue was, of course, the buzzwords and the sudden spread of this topic as a major press release from a lot of different sources. As a matter of fact, one of the scientists on Twitter created a much better, more accurate headline that essentially goes something like this. Breaking news. Physicists create an entangled system of qubits in a quantum computer in a way that is well understood in conventional quantum mechanics. And some physicists have speculated that entangled particles are connected by wormholes. This was actually by this wonderful person, Will Kinney, from Buffalo University. And so, in a nutshell, what we have here is, well, not much. It's essentially someone just playing with quantum computers, entangling things in a way that's always been done by many different scientists for many years, but then kind of saying that, hey, maybe that's a wormhole, right there. But even the press release from the MIT makes a pretty big deal out of it. Unfortunately, though, it's not. But honestly, it could be much worse. If I look at some of the headlines we used to have years ago or even decades ago, with a lot of different press releases making these huge announcements, things back then were much, much worse. But we are slowly getting better. As a matter of fact, because of the sudden feedback Quantum Magazine received from everyone, they even to some extent made a public apology that kind of goes through their explanation and through their reasoning behind this article and behind why and what was done in order to produce it. And though their conclusion is that, well, they still hope that people read their article and possibly get the full understanding of what's happening here, in the end, it's really one of those stories that unfortunately made way too much buzz compared to what it should have been doing. But then again, if you watched some of my early videos, I'm sort of part of the problem as well. Or at least I used to be. I'm trying my best to change, okay? Anyway, so in a nutshell, what do we have from here? Not much. Very cool title, an exceptionally well done clickbait, and basically a lesson in how to become really famous really quick, but in terms of the actual scientific achievements, there is really unfortunately not much here. And as much as I would love for all of us to find the solution to quantum gravity and to finally be able to reconcile between quantum mechanics and general relativity, 
it's not really going to be happening from this. And this also does not prove the holographic principle either. But I'm sure there will be more stories similar to this, probably next year and in months to come, that we're going to be discussing in future videos with people referring to me as a party pooper again. Because maybe that's going to be my goal for 2023, poop on as many parties as possible. Mostly because I just don't like how there is too much clickbait now compared to actual science education. There are a few good ones out there, but they're becoming really rare. And so just like I learned from my experience in the past and stopped doing this, hopefully Quantum Magazine learns from this as well. Because for the most part, a lot of their stuff that they produce is absolutely incredible. But this article will definitely kind of ruin their reputation just a little bit. But then again, remember, to air is human. So, you know, let's maybe forgive them. And so at least for now, that's all I wanted to mention. Subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, support the show on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.